Welcome to All Things Agile, I'm Petula, your host, and today we'll clarify a much talked about, much misunderstood topic in Agile, retrospectives. Let's start by clarifying what retrospectives are not. A conversation. Conversations don't necessarily have an objective and intention. They can go anywhere, in any direction, really aimlessly. People can opt out of it. They really just don't feel like it. Retrospectives are so much more than that. Retrospectives are also not a chore. The definition of a chore is an unpleasant but necessary routine task. Retrospectives don't ever need to be unpleasant. And when they are considered unpleasant, I would say usually there is either an agenda or a format being pushed onto the teams that really doesn't align with how they best work together. And ultimately, retrospectives are not just for Scrum. It is actually the other way around. Agile retrospectives come in to complete the iteration. It's the inspection and adaption cycle. That's what they're doing in there. So what happens is that the Scrum is only one specific flavor of the inspection and adaption cycle. Now that this is understood, what are Agile retrospectives? The first thing, they are a space for learning. As I mentioned, they complete the inspection and adoption cycle. It is the moment where for once, just for once, your concern is the team growth, the team performance, um, what is needed for the team to work better together as a unit, as a collective. You can talk process here, you can talk personal. The second thing, is it is a space for the team to select the next improvement they want to work on. Yes, you can stop your retrospective on the learning piece of things, but it's usually best that you make the effort to select one concrete action that the team wants to take so that they can integrate that learning back into how the team works. And the third one is that it's a little bit of a misnomer. Retro means back. So looking back is a great source of learning for sure. Looking ahead, though, it's also a great idea. In Agile retrospectives, it's not uncommon to spend time designing the future and holding a discussion designing this future state. What do we need to do to get there? What does it look like? Some people like to use the funky name of future perspectives. The reality, though, is that all timelines, the past, the present, the future, are helpful and useful in Agile retrospectives. Whenever I coach Agile teams, I notice that there are two big, huge misconceptions always there to undo. And the first one being that you need a brand new format at every single retrospective. No, you don't. You don't need a new format at every single time. Just think of it. If your team has iterations of one week of length, are you really going to look for 52 different formats in a year to use with them? There is cognitive load associated with learning these new formats and applying them in the meeting of the retrospective. So it's possible that they even overshadow the learning piece itself because it kind of takes the time and the headspace to understand the format. Not to mention that this is kind of a burden in the Agile leader themselves because there you go every single week trying to figure out a new format or tapping out of the internet researching for one. Then the second misconception to undo is also a very strong one is that you can skip the retrospective just this time. Sorry, you can't. The cycle only closes when you have inspection and adaption. Adaption is learning and adjusting. If you skip this piece, you just made your iteration last longer. I tend to think that this misconception comes from people thinking that the retrospective has to last very long. And while I've been to retrospectives that lasted four hours, they can also last 20 minutes. All that you really need to do is make sure that the learning piece is made explicit. And that's why you have the retrospectives. It's you calling out explicitly that learning moment for the team. It is collective learning. If you are not making time for the collective learning explicit, you are not working in Agile. Just saying it like that. 
Now, do you have to work in Agile? No, you don't. But that's how we really operate. There is the, the cyclic iterative nature of Agile. So that is really one of the most important pieces. Um, if you are skipping your retrospective, you are abdicating of a chance for the collective learning of the team. So let's go for an example. Think of a sports team, let's say a hockey team. What do you think that happened after the end of a training session or at the end of a match? You think they just go home and, uh, and drink? Maybe they do that, but before they all get together with the coaches and they talk about what happened. Sometimes you have sessions that are rather long and they even go back and watch the videos to see the, the plays and make sure that they understand exactly what happened. The coaches talk about what they saw, the players talk about how they felt, what they thought was possible during the match. Sometimes it happens literally as a 30 minute session where they kind of like just talk and realign back there. So either you can do it long or you can just share highlights, but it always happens, at least for professional teams. I would also say that teams that skip the retrospective many times, they have a poor dynamics, poor team dynamics, how they work together, and they really don't wanna be confronted with that in the retrospective. There's no escaping it once you were put together in there to learn. Or maybe they don't understand what retrospectives really are. Or, they are not getting any value from the retrospectives they have been having so far. That is something that can be resolved by educating the team on what are retrospectives, figuring out a good but simple format for the retrospective, and by having good facilitation skills. Successful agile retrospectives, be them long or short, they have five stages in it. Number one, set the stage. Give it a clear beginning, a moment for people to arrive and put their mindset to where it's needed, a mindset of learning, capable of looking back and forward. Number two, gather the data. In other words, be factual, be explicit, bring to light what people know, how they feel, what happened, empty people's mind and hearts before you actually dive in into seeking improvements. Number three is generate insights. This is a big part of the retrospective and it's one to pay attention to hear everybody out. So design your retrospective in a way that the shy people as well as the talkative people get to share their ideas and thoughts. Number four is decide what to do. Don't take for granted that after having an energetic discussion, you can just part ways, leaving things up in the air. Retrospectives are radically intentional. So what is a decision on what to improve next? On what do you want to do differently as a team? Not only the team grows because of the actions they take, but everybody individually learns how to systematically approach learning, you can do retrospectives with yourself and your own ideas following these five steps. And number five is closing the retrospective. Yes, take time to officially say it is over. Summarize what happened, close the meeting, and why not gather feedback on the retrospective itself? Was it useful? Was helpful, what wasn't helpful, etc. Agile retrospectives are so powerful that this is the second most used Agile tool behind only of the daily standup, according to the State of Agile report of last year. So if you are overlooking or just glossing over retrospectives, you literally are missing out on an opportunity to build your team's self-organization, autonomy, and adaptability. What is the pain point that you had when running Agile retrospectives? Let me know in the comment. And if you wanna know more about the five stages of the Agile retrospectives, I am linking a blog post down below for you to check out. Other than that, I'll stop right here and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.